let's go on to um, the last thing that I want to show you concerning the time value money and that is to use um, amortization tables okay so let me start by a very simple example you want to you have a car loan for five thousand dollars okay so this is uh, an amount that you receive today and therefore the present value you already know it's five thousand remember you're receiving these five thousand dollars because there are it's a loan so therefore you don't have to worry really about um, the negative sign because this is money that you receive okay this loan will be paid off in three annual payments so the number of the periods are three years the interest rate that you have to pay is eight percent so that's the interest rate eight percent you can write it as I or remember you can write it as rate whatever you prefer okay I just leave it as I because it's interest rate your tax uses are don't forget and so the, what you want to know is, is find out how, how this evolves. How does that work? How does the loan progress, right? Um, how do you amortize and pay off the loan? So here's uh, what I want us to, to do. Um, in order to find out how you're going to pay off the loan, right, how much you're paying interest every year and so on, uh, you, the first thing you have to do is find out what the payment looks like, right? What is the payment such that you're going to be able to uh, pay off the $5,000 of initial loan in knowing that your interest rate is 8%. So here the um, the unknown in contrast to the other exercises is actually PMT, the payment. So this is what we're going to do equal to PMT. Okay, That's the, There's an Excel function called payment. Lucky for us, right? So it says, okay, give me the rate that you're being you know, charged or you're receiving. In this case, we're being charged. The rate is eight percent okay it's very important to remember that these payments are once a year so it's okay to, to provide it with the eight percent rate because this is eight percent per year had had these payments been let's say monthly payments then you would have had to divide the eight percent by 12. in other words there always should be a consistency between the periodicity of the payment and the interest rate that you're being charged here there's no problem because the payments are annual and uh, the interest rate is annual. So I just click on the rate of 8%. What are the number of periods? How many annual periods do I, am I going to take in order to pay the loan? You know, they're here, the three. What is the present value? What is the amount that I'm receiving today? It's $5,000. The future value, we don't worry about because you're going to pay off the loan completely, so that will be zero, we'll leave it empty. Okay, the type is left as it is. When you press OK, wh what sign do you, can you guess the payment will have? Okay, press OK. The sign is negative. Why is it negative? Well, simply because Excel, in Excel's you know way of looking at things, if you're receiving five thousand dollars, then it means that you have to pay off that those loan, right? There's nothing free that comes. Okay, so that's why it's negative, right? So um, in order to construct the amortization table, we're going to be very careful about uh, the negative sign. The negative sign comes from the from Excel's operations, but that does not mean that we necessarily have to carry a negative sign in our calculations. To make it more intuitive, I'm not going to use negative 1,940 because I, I know exactly why that came out negative because of Excel's calculations. So here's what I'm going to do. What is my beginning balance? That's easy. My beginning balance is equal to $5,000. Right? I'm just going to click on this equal sign, just click on the cell that I want to bring in, $5,000. What is my payment going to be? Okay. What is my payment? My, my payment is going to be equal to, and now what I'm going to do is just basically click right here. Okay. And by the way, just to make it easy, so just click right here. Okay. Just to make it easy, once I have this solution, then I don't really need that negative uh, sign, so I'm going to put a that negative number, I'm going to put a negative sign in there because I, I know what it means. I, it just means that I'm going to have to pay off the loan, the $5,000 loans, uh, paying $1,140 every year. Okay. The nice thing is that this becomes much more intuitive. I'll show you why in one second. So my payment is $1,140. Now, how much is my interest? How much is the interest that I'm going to have to pay? Okay, The interest component. Well, the interest component is going to be equal to, uh, what is the interest rate? The interest rate is going to be eight percent okay and this is what I want to do now now this is um, a, another trick right I don't want to work very hard so I want to be able to make Excel repeat all the calculations once I'm done so I don't have to work do this every time so I want Excel to always I'm going to drag this cell down and I'm going to make it do the calculations all over again but I want to tell Excel to always when it wants the interest rate to always go to this 
specific cell. How do I tell it to always go to this specific cell? I lock those references. And how do I lock the references? I'm going to press F4. Okay. Uh, some of you can press F4 directly, but in some machines you have to actually press Function and F4. All of your laptops, no matter what they are, um, will have an F4. As long as you can press F4, you'll see that you're locking the references. How do you know you're locking them? Because it's the dollar signs up here. For Max, you can use Command T, I believe, and that will also lock the references. Okay, so you're locking those references. So the I and well, how much interest are you going to pay? That's the interest rate multiplied times the beginning balance. Okay, four hundred dollars. And by the way, uh, what I want to do here too while I'm at it to make things easy for myself is I'm going to also put the, put the cursor right here and I'm going to again press F4. Why? Because I want to tell Excel to always go back and grab the 1940 because the payment is always going to be fixed. Okay, So I'm fixing the payment and I'm fixing the I that I'm going to use for my interest rate calculations. Alright, what is the principal reduction? In other words, if I pay a 1940 and out of that money $400 are interest only, how much of that, of those 1940 are for principal reduction? I'm paying off my loan. Here I'm explaining that subtract column D from column C. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just subtract this and this two numbers. Okay, so I'm paying 1940, which is $400 of interest and $1,500 of principal reduction. That's how much I'm paying down my debt by. So my ending balance would be, I started with how much? I started with my beginning balance, column B, right, of $5,000, and then you subtract E, which is the amount of the principal that you're actually reducing. The rest is interest, so it doesn't count. And what I'll still owe the bank at the end of the first year is 3490 So I'm going to go to the next cell, and what is my beginning balance now? Equal what is my beginning balance in year two is going to be the ending balance at the end of year one. So I'm just going to do equal sign and just click on this number. Okay, And that's pretty much it because now since I've worked and I've fixed everything, I'm just going to highlight the whole row and just you see the bottom right corner, this little button, just left, um, you know, push the left button in your mouse if you're using a mouse and just drag this down. Okay, And everything will be recalculated. And then just drag it one more time. Okay. And so you'll see that uh, you will pay off the loan in three years. Okay, this is a simple example, but I want to show you now a much more uh, realistic and complicated one. One in which you have to um, buy a home. Okay, uh, this time you the price is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and you have. Um, you have 20% as the down payment. Okay, so if you have 20% of that as uh, down payment, that means you basically have you're going to have um, pay off you have $30,000 of your own, right? So how much are you really borrowing? You're really borrowing uh, $120,000. Okay, so you are going to f uh, fund finance uh, this uh, the the remaining balance, the $120,000. Uh, using a 20-year amortizing mortgage and you can pay 9% but those payments are going to be monthly payments okay so let's create an amortization table based on that now as you can imagine the amortization table is going to be much longer right because these are monthly payments for 20 years and nobody wants to be able to do that so I'm going to show you how what we did here is going to help us tremendously with solving this problem very quickly let's start what is the present value what is the amount that you're actually um, going to uh, have to pay off. It's 120000 right? Okay, That's how much you need to borrow from the bank because you already have $30,000 in your own. Okay, so now the number of periods, how many years, how much is the loan by? The number of years is, are 20. Okay, You'll see what we do later on in one second. What is the interest rate that you're going to have to be charged? The interest rate you're going to have to pay, right, that you're charged is a 9%. Okay, so far so good. So what is the payment like? What is the monthly payment that you're going to have to provide to the bank in order to pay off this $120,000 loan if you charge 9% on a monthly basis and you 
have to make you know monthly payments for these 20 years so this is what we're going to do as before let's let's calculate the PMT okay PMT FX okay and what I want to do is just show you the amortization table the questions here you can do on your own um, but basically I want us to use the I want you to to just solve the amortization pay table with me. Once you have the amortization table, then you can respond to any of the questions. So let's do the rate. Let's find the payment first. Okay, the payment will be remembered. We need the rate. Now this is very important. These payments are monthly payments. Remember, not annual payments, but monthly payments. So the rate that you're going to be charged on each month will be equal to. Now you're going to click on the nine percent. But what must you do? You must divide this by twelve in order to make it a monthly rate. So if you have monthly payments, then you have to make sure that you have a monthly rate. If you have annual payments, then you can use an annual rate. If you have payments every three months, then you have to use a you know quarterly rate. Okay. So in this case, because I want I have monthly payments, I want to convert it to a monthly rate. I just divide by twelve. The number of periods would be equal to, again, these are twenty years. So I'm going to click on the twenty, but to make it monthly, I'm going to have to multiply these times twelve. Okay. I hope this is making sense. The present value is $120,000. The future value is zero. The type is left alone, and you press OK. So notice that the 1079 is the rate. And don't worry about this. This is just to help you answer the questions. But for now, the payment is 1079 OK? As before, we know that this is red just because of the way Excel does its thing. I'm going to put a negative sign in front. So you know we all know what this means. I'm going to have to pay $1,079 every month for the next 20 years in order to pay out this loan. Okay. But let me show you how to very quickly uh, solve this uh, amortization problem. Now remember, 20 um, years of monthly payment means that you're going to have how many uh, overall, how many rows? 240 rows. This is not something that you want to do manually, right? So let's start with the beginning balance. Beginning balance is equal to $120,000. Okay. What is my payment? My payment is going to be equal to how much is that? right but because I want this to be locked because I wanted this to drag this down and I wanted to always go back to the same monthly payment I'm going to press F4 or command T for Mac users so I can lock that reference that's the same first thing I'm going to do okay now what is the interest I'm going to have to pay the interest is going to be equal to what is my interest rate be very careful now my interest rate is going to be equal to the I I wanted to always go to this cell right the I okay I'm going to now lock those references press F4 or command T for Mac users and this is the 9% but remember these are monthly payments so I'm going to have to divide this by 12 right that's that is really what my um, you know monthly interest will be right 9% divided by 12 and to get the, the the dollar value I have to multiply all this times my outstanding balance okay and that gives me $900 so interest of $900 and the payment is $1,079. So what is the principle that I'm paying down? The difference between, remember this? The difference between the payment, right, and the interest payment, right? Between the overall payment and the interest payment. The same thing here. The difference between the overall payment and what I pay in interest. So I'm paying down my debt by $179 in the first month. Not much, right? It's mostly interest. So what is my ending balance? I started by owing $120,000. I paid down how much of the principal? Only $179. So I end up with $119,820 still owed to the bank. Okay. One more thing. The second, uh, the, the beginning of the the balance of the, of the second year, a month will be equal to the ending balance of the first month. So I'm just going to do equal sign and just click here. So now I'm almost ready. Look, let's highlight this for a second. This far. Let's not work too hard. Let's highlight that and just drag this down. Okay. All right. And now here comes the the wonderful part, right? Now I'm just all I'm going to do is just highlight everything. And you see this bottom right uh, button right here? here? Now just double click on that. And when you double click on that, Excel repeats everything for the next for as long as there is a, uh, a some sort of reference in the line. So if you scroll down, you'll see that eventually uh, the, you have an amortization table that pays everything off. Okay, you're, you're, we've done things right if this becomes zero. Okay, this is the end of this video.